Floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, wildfires. Everything can change in an instant when emergencies strike. I'm Ness Murby. I'm a Paralympian, I'm blind, I'm a disaster survivor, and I'm your host for this video series that is your guide to prepare and plan for natural emergencies in Canada. This is your AMI Emergency Series. Determining vulnerabilities. In an emergency, just how vulnerable would you be? Knowing when you're at risk can give you a head start on staying safe. Your goal? Be self-sufficient for 72 hours. The area where you live can have unique hazards, with specific challenges if you're blind or partially sighted, so being prepared is especially important. Even a moderate earthquake could be a challenge to navigate if you depend on objects being in a fixed location in your home. When trying to determine where your vulnerabilities are in different emergencies, there are a few things to think about. With networks down, cell phones may not connect, restricting your ability to communicate. Many emergencies can change the areas around you. They may feel unfamiliar or have new physical challenges that can prevent you from getting around. With those changing conditions, your service animal may be frightened by the sounds and change of landscape, making it difficult for them to work. Both you and your service animal can be impacted by stress, confusion, or injury. Before an emergency, identify three or more trusted people who can help, including people from work, home, or school. Create a plan and a backup plan. Write it down and share it with that trusted team. There are some great accessible communication apps such as WhatsApp, Signal, and iMessage. Setting up an emergency chat group with your trusted team is a great way to stay connected and share your plan. Let them know about any health conditions you have and medications you need, along with how to operate any medical or mobility equipment. Consider enrolling in the medical alert program in the event you're immobilized. It's a good idea to let your team know if you're going out of town. Access to your home is important, so they should also have a spare key. Your plan should identify information sources like Environment Canada, provincial emergency service departments, or your local city emergency centre. It should also include a phone list of your trusted team members and include at least one out-of-area contact so that you can connect outside of the area if there's a larger scale emergency. You'll also want to include emergency services and details for your service animal. And don't forget to include every member of your household in your plans, including kids, service animals, and pets. You can use your plan as a guideline to develop individual plans for each member of your household, customized to each of their needs. Should the emergency destroy or damage things you own, insurance claims might be necessary. Keep records of purchases with a copy of the receipt and the warranty. If possible, back up your records off-site or online. The last part of managing vulnerabilities is dealing with stress. In an emergency, your mental health can be at risk. Things can happen fast, so take time to breathe, relax, and focus on one task at a time. As soon as it's safe to do so, check in with how you're feeling, and don't be afraid to ask for help. What else can you do in emergencies? Watch the complete AMI emergency series at ami.ca, on the AMI-TV app, and at the AMI YouTube channel.